Hi, DD Solar here. This video is going to be a distilled and simplified explanation of certain technical aspects you need to know and understand before buying and let alone plugging in a plug-in grid tie inverter. Using a grid tie inverter without understanding how it works and the potential dangers involved could be very catastrophic and could actually result in burning down your house. The first thing you must understand is that the wiring in a typical residential home was never intended or designed to be used with anything that feeds power back into it. It is only designed to be used as a service distribution for electrical service throughout the home and that's it. As soon as you start feeding electrical power back into the socket, you have already gone outside of the normal use case for residential electrical wiring and as such you are incurring a safety risk. In order to keep this easy to understand and short, I'm going to make a simple diagram to show you exactly why a plug-in grid tie inverter is dangerous and must be fully understood and all the risks involved before buying one, let alone plugging one in. In this simple diagram, I represent the electrical utility service as providing two electrical power feeds coming from their systems into your home. This information is generic and it really does not matter what country you're in, how many phases of power are going into your home, what voltage it is at, and so forth. The principles are exactly the same in any case. This electrical power will enter a distribution box or a breaker box or whatever you want to call it. This is where the power is distributed throughout your home. Inside this box are quite a few circuit breakers. Usually several of those circuit breakers are attached to one or more AC electrical outlets to use for various appliances in your home. These circuits proceed out of the distribution box almost like branches of a tree, so it's not hard to see why they're often called branch circuits. In the United States at least, a typical circuit breaker in a residential home might be rated at 15 amps. If you were to plug three 5 amp heaters, one into each outlet on this branch circuit of 15 amps, the total current would be 15 amps and the breaker should not trip. Believe it or not, the purpose of the circuit breaker is not to protect your appliances. It is only to protect the wiring in the house wall, which is one of the most expensive repairs that you could ever do to a typical home. If one of these heaters malfunctioned, it could short out and draw too much current and burn up the wiring that's in the wall. But that's why the circuit breaker is there. If any of these heaters were to malfunction, it would simply trip the circuit breaker and all the current would stop flowing and you would be safe. Now consider the following change. We unplug the 5 amp heater from the first outlet and we plug it into the second outlet. Then we take a 5 amp plug-in grid tie inverter and we plug it into the first outlet. Now you see that the grid tie inverter is pushing power into the branch at a rate of 5 amps. This causes the circuit breaker to only see 10 amps of draw since 5 of the amps is coming from the grid tie inverter and the remaining 10 amps is coming from the circuit breaker. At first glance this might seem okay. After all, the point of a grid tie inverter is to make sure your circuit breaker sees less power. In other words, it doesn't run up your power bill quite as fast. Some of the power is coming from the grid tie inverter, and so you save money, right? Actually, this is incredibly dangerous. What the grid tie inverter has done is literally defeat the circuit breaker. In the diagram, you can see that the circuit breaker is now showing a current of 15 amps, so it's not going to trip. However, there are four 5 amp heaters plugged into the wall drawing a total of 20 amps. The grid tie inverter is providing 5 amps, the circuit breaker is providing 15 amps. The problem is that the wiring in the home is only designed to handle 15 amps, according to this diagram. It really doesn't matter where in the branch circuit this is done, or how many outlets there are, because if even one foot of wire or six inches of wire is carrying 5 amps more than it's supposed to carry, it will get hot, and potentially catch fire and burn down your house. It also doesn't matter what country you're in or what voltage you're running at or what brand of heaters they are, the principle is the same and the result is also. The safer way to use a plug-in grid tie inverter is to use a dedicated circuit with a dedicated outlet and don't plug anything else in. This way the circuit breaker will only see the amount of current that the grid tie inverter is producing. What is not discussed here is whether the wiring in a residential home, the outlets, and the circuit breakers, and so forth, are suitable for backfeeding when they were only intended for distribution outbound to the appliances, not the other way. That topic is not covered here. Before using a plug-in grid tie inverter, you should absolutely understand this diagram and this example thoroughly, forwards and backwards, before you even think about plugging one in or using one in your home or any building.